Hi, everyone. Uh, hope DrupalCon is going well for you all. We are here for uh, building mobile apps using Drupal as a base system. We're going to talk about mobile apps and why to use Drupal in the behind it and how to manage data and uh, other things. So, all right. Moving ahead. Uh, my name is Sumit. Uh, I'm a freelancer as well as a private contractor with Civic Actions. Uh, I've been doing Drupal for like four years now, uh, building a lot of mobile apps, uh, using Drupal as a base system, apart from the website I've done. And uh, you can contact me, uh, sumitk at sumitk.net. Uh, I'm sumitk everywhere, by the way, IRC, Twitter, uh, anywhere you like me to. And that's your URL to my blog, if you'd like to know more. So, why we are here today? We wanna, why, why we are, we, we wanna build for mobile, so. That's like, everybody likes app, we, we just love them. Like, my meal, my location, my, what, what I'm looking, what products I'm using, we just wanna share everything using our cell phones. We, we just don't wanna wait to get home, get a picture, to upload it to, uh, to my computer and share it with my friends. We just wanna do it right away. So for that reason, we, we wanna use apps and we wanna build them. So, uh, and there are numbers which, which say, speaks for themselves, like more than 25% of the US market uh, is using iOS now, including iPad, iPhone, and, uh, uh, and iPad. Uh, and then the 26% of the market is using Android devices, which runs on more than 80 devices these days. Uh, and like the other player is like RIM and Blackberry, uh, which are still in lead, but they are coming lower and lower day by day. So there are like a couple of reasons, a couple of strong reasons to think about your mobile strategy and how to build apps, what to use, how to do it, and how to achieve your goals. So, so is mobile development really expensive or is it like, I don't know. So yes, it is expensive. Like if you think about it, you are building a base system behind it. Uh, like for example, you build a Drupal website, you know how, how customized system you're trying to build there. So if you are trying to build a mobile app, you are building a whole system behind it to support it, support data, support configurations, support all the users, content, taxonomies, and uh, geolocation data, maybe. So, and after that, then you get into the mobile development side, which is like iOS using Objective-C, or uh, Android using Java. Those, those two are like uh, beasts again. You, you need to learn it, there's a learning curve, and then there's like long development times, and. So that, that gets you to like little worries, like li that, that, that makes you a little worried what to, what to do, how to proceed in that direction. So what we do like when we, when, we, uh, when we try to figure out something simpler, we look for tools. That's what we did. <laughs> so that's like XPCD and somebody's trying to use it as a tool. So yeah, so we, tr we looked for tools in the market, what, what kind of tools that we can use to build these kind of apps easily, fast, uh, in a cost-effective way, and which can do out of the box everything that we like them to. But there are so many out there in the market, like there are so many tools, which one to choose? Uh, there, are, there are so many big ones out there as well, like uh, Titanium is a bigger one, and then there are a couple of WebKit-based tools around, and then there, uh, there are more. But uh, like we, we choose Titanium, uh, as, as a, like, it's a clear winner to, in my view. It's like really effective, you get native apps, and uh, it's, it's, it totally works with like a Drupal as a base system that you try to do in your apps. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it totally works out of the box, and it's, it's really great. And I'm gonna explain that later on in my, uh, in my presentation. And uh, except that, like, it's enterprise supported already. Uh, so many bigger enterprise and uh, corporations are using it. Uh, they, NBC Universal just launched their iPad app with it, uh, which, which plays so many videos, and a lot of content is there. You, it's a free app, you should, you should if you wanna see it's, uh, like what, what you can do with Titanium, you, you, should, uh, you should totally wanna download the NBC uh, Universal app and see uh, how it could be used in your projects. It, it plays videos, there are so many sharing, app, uh, sharing things in it, and then you can browse shows and uh, other content from, from their web-based system. So, so the question is like, what is this? What, what is Titanium or Accelerator? So uh, Titanium is like, uh, it's, it's a free 
first of all, it's a free framework which allows you to uh, build applications for, for, for phones and for your tablets, for desktop, and, and you use like almost like 90% of the same code base for everything, like even for desktop or, or anything else. And so this is a free open source framework that you use to build applications, and the major part, which is a good thing, is like you don't have to learn any new skills. Uh, you're just using JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS, your existing web development skills that you, that you already know. So, so it uses them to write your applications, and you get your application out very soon, very quickly, low development time, amount of code is very small compared to uh, Objective-C or Java code, uh, and you get native apps, that's an advantage. And it's open source. So did you say like uh, Apache 2.0 and open source? We love that. We, we, we love Drupal. We are at DrupalCon. And we know we, we, we all love open source. And so that's the best part around Titanium. So what, what else it has? Like it, 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 it has a modular approach to add new functionality to, to your existing framework. It's open source, so you can fork it down. So you can customize it according to your needs or your corporation's needs. And then uh, there are lots of available APIs out of the box, like social networking API and uh, YQL API and so many others, so which, which are like, available out of the box. You, uh, you can use them to build apps. And then uh, it supports iPhone and Android out of the box. And BlackBerry is still in beta. And uh, it's, it's, it's there for developers, not for uh, other people at the moment. But it, it's, it's pretty stable, too. And uh, the best part is like it's uh, low development time, which, which reduces the cost of product and uh, reduces everything around it. So that's the best part. And it's scalable. And uh, you, you, you want to build it once, and then you want to scale it to another level, to another level, another level. It's totally possible. You are maintaining just one code base for everything. So that makes it that powerful. So the question why we are here, why to use Drupal to manage all the mobile applications data? Well, uh, you know Drupal, and it's an out-of-the-box perfect system for this. Uh, Drupal can manage all your data and content. Uh, it, can, it can manage all your sessions and cookies and uh, user registrations, user login, authentication uh, information in a secure way. And uh, you can do very customized things in very easily using Drupal, like search or uh, creating views, like extracting data, writing queries using views and a lot of things that you can think of, like user relationships, managing uh, friends, managing followers, and uh, comments, geolocation-based things. So, so there is like, it's, it's a very powerful system. That's why we choose Drupal as a backend. And uh, the, the part is like, it, it reduces the cost of project a lot. If it's the same as you're trying to build something from scratch using HTML or PHP and then build a system on it, or you want to use a CMS system behind your application which is like so much capable of doing a lot of stuff that you want to build. So everyone is bored. Big ones are bored first. So uh, what, what else we need, uh, we need to get into, the, uh, get into this stuff? And uh, how, to, how to use Drupal basically to manage your data in app, mobile apps? And uh, what, what, are the, what are the things that we can do with it? Uh, I'm going to explain that later in the slides. And uh, so f first of all, like Drupal has a services API, which is the perfect thing uh, for, for it to, to make it, which makes it perfect to use it as a platform for mobile apps. Uh, so services API is like, it's, it's, a, mo it's a module. It's, it's here since Drupal 5. It's very stable. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's a branch. Like it's 3.x right now. It's available for Drupal 5, Drupal 6, Drupal 7. Very well supported. What it do is it, it, it makes Drupal to act as a web service or a API. So it gives you the endpoints where you can make your requests and get data out of it uh, in or using REST server or JSON server, whatever you like to. We'll talk more about that later. And so basically, services API is consisting of three things, three major layers. Oh, first one is services. Uh, services is like what you want to do with your Drupal site, how you want to get data out. For example, I, I want to get extract user information out using user.get. So that is a service, user.get. And if I want to extract out in views data, views.get is another service. Uh, in similar way, we have servers. 
Uh, servers are like how you are making requests to services API in Drupal. So for example, if you want like request XML RPC format and get XML RPC back, so that's XML RPC server that we have. And similarly, JSON and REST servers are coming along. And uh, authentication layer, which comes in between the server and our requests, like it, it, it makes sure you are authenticated, you are authenticated to make the request uh, to, to the Drupal-based system, and uh, yeah, which, which makes it more secure and fun. And more about like titanium architecture, how we're gonna build our stuff is like, uh, we're gonna write our code in JavaScript, CSS, or HTML on the top layer, and then uh, we're gonna then then Titanium is going to take it and like is going to uh, compile it to Objective C or Java, or and run it on uh, iOS or Android devices separately. So we are writing once, and but we are using the same code to, to do multiple things for iOS and Android in this case which we are showing. And similarly for desktop and um, uh, BlackBerry, desktop has like a little bit different API and uh, ways to do stuff, but yeah, BlackBerry is almost similar. Oh, so more getting more into the like uh, features of Titanium and what what it is like. It provides you like native UI functionality. You can write uh, native UI code in JavaScript and use it in the app. Uh, then it's like it got very rich uh, media API, which enables you to do like video streaming and video recording and photo uh, clicking and using the gallery part of the app and uh, things like that and recording audio or stuff like that and. Then there's like very powerful location API. You can you can get the location of a uh, inside the app, and then you can save it or you can use it whenever you like to. Uh, then the remote and local data is something uh, very uh, efficient. Like you can save uh, the application's data in local database in a SQLite way, and uh, and remote data is like you can uh, you can make XHR calls to to whenever service you want it to be. It could be Drupal, it could be any other XML or any other JSON service you want to fetch data from. Uh, it also has like some other features like analytics and stuff. If you like, if you're interested, you can use them. I'm, I'm never going into those. Uh, then it provides social APIs, which is like really exciting. Uh, it, it gets you functionality for sh uh, sharing on Facebook, Twitter, uh, out of the box. You, you can just use the basic uh, API to share your stuff. Uh, like you register your app on Facebook and you get the IDs, app IDs and app secret. You use them in the app and uh, you can share stuff on Facebook when whatever user is doing. Uh, similarly for Twitter, but it's like more a little bit complex. You need to look and in, hook into the auth adapters and auth SHA1 uh, to do more Twitter sharing. So how how this all fits into into Drupal and our app and how to do stuff. So so what what happens is like Drupal is going to manage all our data, users, and all the information that we want to use in our app. And then we build the Titanium uh, apps, uh, like in JavaScript and uh, other <coughs> others web technologies. And then we compile them for uh, our iPad, iPhone, or Android. And then we we fetch the data from Drupal directly into our apps. So this is something. Uh, next, I want to give you like little examples how how what we can do and how stuff we can use Drupal uh, into it. For example, like if, if, I'm, uh, if, I, if there is a closed system, I want to just users who have logged into my website. And uh, we, we can build systems like uh, Ruplize.me, which, uh, which is a closed website, which, which enables you to watch videos and uh, Drupal tutorials. But you need to log in first. So there's a website which, if you have a login for it, you can get, in the, you get into the app, and you can uh, watch videos. So it authenticates you to your Drupal website and gets you back there with authentication. Uh, session ID, and then you can make other calls using your app. So similarly, if you uh, similarly, it's the views listing, like it's fetching a view out from my Drupal site and uh, building a table on the app. We're gonna demo these uh, later on in the <clears throat> in the presentation. So so these are like the basic things that you can do, like whatever you can think of a Drupal website, you can do it on mobile apps. Uh, then you can add new, create new nodes on, on Drupal-based system and save all the user content there, whatever they like to say. Uh, for example, in this case, we are uh, I'm showing a form which enables you to add new workout on. Uh, it's a gym, gym app which, which user can create workouts and then they can post uh, the, work, uh, the workout sessions onto it. So these are all nodes and a lot of user references and node references. Uh, and they're all handled by app. You just send the data back via node.save. It saves it on your Drupal site. 
all the data is saved over there, and uh, you got very complex data structure handling very easily using Drupal. It's it's like, and then there is like this. For, the other example is like you can, uh, if you have an app, you want users to just download it and register account. So in this way, like you are just creating a new account, it will save all the user information data, and uh, then you get into the app, you do stuff, and you have an account on Drupal based website, and uh, you are using your app. For example, you, you might have used Instagram app or some other examples which, which enables you to create account and then do stuff, or like upload photos. And we, we're going to get into examples later on with MealCamp too. Uh, after that, like, there, like you can do searches. Uh, like searches could be uh, very heavy everywhere. So you can like, use search a service on services API. Uh, you use Node service uh, or Apache Solar service to search content there. And it will uh, just fetch out the, all the results and fill a table for you. Then you can play these videos or look into the details, whatever you like. And uh, the other thing is like node, node display, the content display. Uh, you can fetch more data, more pictures, and stuff like that, kind of video, and taxonomy terms around it. And you can display it on, uh, in the app. Uh, after that, like, uh, you, can, you can build listings directly uh, using views and uh, taxonomies. So for example, I have like 10 taxonomy terms. I want to act those as my uh, browse section of my application. I'm just fetching a view from my site, I'm listing it over there. Then I'm clicking on one of the category. It is fetching another view, making TID as, uh, as a uh, call, and it's fetching me the data for that taxonomy ID. And so, so like it's, it's using your basic views of, and basic Drupal knowledge that you use every day site building uh, to build mobile apps. And, after that, if you're getting like a complex data structure, you, you can do like you can maintain user crews uh, using flag module, and uh, similarly you can use like a relationships module. Uh, and there are good services around relationships built already in on Drupal.org. You can use them to like mark people, follow them, make them friends, follow their content. So this all this stuff is possible. Like a social networking thing that you want to build is possible from uh, from Drupal-based system. And you don't have to write any, anything in, on, the, on the web end or on the configuration end because all the things are already there. Just using them via services, exposing them via services. Uh, after that, you get iPad apps out of the box. Everybody loves the iPad apps. Uh, you, you maintain the same database, uh, same code base, sorry. Same code base for iPhone and iPad. You can build universal apps which will work on iPhone as well as iPads. And uh, you just do like a little bit of configuration, <clears throat> like sizes and stuff, to manage uh, each of them, and maybe a an UI a little bit. And then you get out of the box iPad apps with the same code base. That's most importantly. Uh, it's just displaying more of the iPad app and <clears throat> how we are building listing and, and stuff. And uh, in the background, there is an image showing uh, it's it's debug data that we're getting from iPad app. So, all right, a couple of demos I want to show you uh, how to do stuff. Any questions so far? All right. See it there, but not here. <coughs> All right, so let's try this resolution. Can you see my screen okay? Just give me a second. I need to go to my native resolution to get back to other side of the window. Come on. 
can help me here. I just need to go to my other other window. Just click on Mirror Display, maybe. Okay, it's better. All right, can you see it? Okay. All right, so this is a Drupalize.me iPad app that I'm going to demo. Uh, what it does is like it uses. Uh, everybody knows about Drupalize.me. It's a uh, video tutorial for Drupal, it's, and uh, it, it's built by Lullabot, and uh, it's going to be in App Store very soon. It's in approval process right now, and uh, what you can do is like you can browse all the videos and uh, all the content from Drupalize.me and watch them on, on your iPod or uh, iPhones or Android-based devices. So we're going to see if it's going to work here. Uh, here I'm launching my iPad simulator. Okay. All right, here we go. Hope internet works. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm going to log in real quick using my Drupal credentials. It's going to authenticate me back to uh, my Drupal-based system. Here you can see it's making a user.system.connect call, first of all. It's getting an anonymous user ID here. Then I'm, creating, uh, I'm doing a user.login request with my username and password. And uh, it's going to authenticate me and if internet allows me to. <laughs> Ooh, is internet working for any of the other people? Like, is your internet working? Oh, it got me an error. Domain code to request timed out. Let's try it one more time. <clears throat> internet was a very important part of my demos, and if it's going to screw up, we are screwed. Why don't everybody else shut down their internet for a while so that I can have a good bandwidth? <laughs> I didn't. Do I have another wire? I got a backup. <laughs> All right, yeah. But I'm not sure how far it's going to get me there. Let me get on this wired internet. Okay, it's pretty fast, I guess. Yeah. All right, let's launch it one more time. So as you can see, uh, behind it, it's called Titanium Studio, which you will be using to develop apps in Titanium. Uh, it helps you uh, write code, compile it, and execute it on simulator as well as real devices. And uh, here I am just uh, launching my Drupalize.me app on my iPad simulator. Oh, come on, it's, internet is still not working good. Really? <laughs> Let's move to next demo, I guess, if it's not going to work. Last time. <laughs> and the background you can see is like all the, uh, all the debugger is running, and you can see all the errors coming, the requests we are making, whatever data we want to uh, uh, send to logging, uh, you can send it here. You can see it in the console. 
Okay, the, uh, the other app I wanted to demo is it's called MealCam. It's using Drupal 7. Uh, it's a very simple uh, photo uploading app uh, which enables you to like click a photo on your mobile phone and attach a couple of uh, information with it like title and description, maybe in this case. And just upload, it just uploads it to your Drupal-based website under your account. And you can browse all those photos there or on your mobile app. And you can, you can email those photos directly to your friends or uh, maybe other things that you like to do. <clears throat> that requires internet too. Pardon? Oh, I need, I can't hear you properly. Probably need the mic there. So, okay, can you see this app? I don't know why this is running like this. It should be. So this is a MealCam app. You can uh, upload photos and stuff using it. It's, it's actually, it's showing very weird. Let me compile it again. Okay, it's going to run like this in this resolution. So what you can do, you can uh, select a photo or you can click a photo from the gallery. Uh, uh, you can s I'm going to select a photo from my gallery. And I'm going to upload this one. I'm going to say it, my presentation pack. And just maybe a caption otherwise. Okay, good. Then you can. Uh, Say so yeah, add it to my collection. It's going to upload it back to my Drupal-based system, and it's showing me here that I, this is the details of my photo that I just uploaded. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to show you on the, on the Drupal 7 website that we have for this. Okay. <laughs> Come on, we are screwed without the internet here. Okay, but the photo got uploaded somehow. See. Uh, here, here we have uh, the photo that we just uploaded, and this is the data that we sent to a Drupal-based system. So uh, it is all authenticated. You create an account on the go, and then you uh, log in with that account. You use uh, you authenticate via session ID uh, to your, to your map app to your Drupal-based website, and then you send picture, and it uploads it and attaches it to a node. And uh, you can browse all these pictures here, whatever you have uploaded in the past, and you can go in details and stuff. So this is like a very simple example of what, what you can do. Like we are also adding locations to it, like displaying photos on maps inside the app, uh, fetching geolocations from, from Drupal and uh, maybe other sources, and yeah, and maybe searching geolocation, uh, geolocation what, what are, what's going on around me using Drupal, uh, using our location module, which is very powerful, again. Okay, the next app I'm gonna demo is like, it's called uh, Twad, and Let's hope internet works for that. Any questions so far? If this guy had a question, can you please pass your mic? How many lines, how, how much access do you have from, from, do you have like access to the camera? Yes, we do. Yeah? Yeah. You, uh, so you Mm -hmm. Th there is a there is a module for that barcode scanner. You can use you can scan uh, barcodes and get the information out of it using. Can you, can you program it directly in titanium? Yes, yes. <coughs> so there is another whole set of uh, new modules coming out with titanium. They call it the titanium plus, which is something going to be related to our Drupal App Store kind of thing, where you can actually buy these kind of modules. So they have already a credit card scanner, QR code scanner, barcode scanner. And a PayPal API, very extensive PayPal in-app purchase system, and a couple of others as well, using uh, for analytics and things. They're like not not that expensive. They are very cheap. You can use them in their apps. Like they have like a two hundred dollar a year subscription. You can use you can buy that and then you can use it in your apps. Yes, yeah, they're licensing. Uh, I think if you have license, you can use in any, uh, as many apps you, you want. You just need to get a $200 or $400 subscription per, per year. Okay. Yeah. 
And uh, you know the best part is it's a very, uh, very active community. You, you always find open source version of that, those modules. So for example, Urban Airship present, is present in a TI plus module set, but it's, there are so many other alternatives out there which other people have proposed. Uh, and you can use any of those if you like. It's, it's always, it's, an, it's like Drupal, you have many ways to solve a problem. Uh, for user interfaces, like there is no uh, UI builder, drag and drop. You you need to write code, which is like just JavaScript. It's very. It's always, this is the with me, I, I coded uh, TextMate and compile it in this stuff. And with with Android device, I always use device. I never use emulator because emulator is so heavy. If you are developing in Java or Titanium, it doesn't matter. Emulator with Android is like it's very hard to work with. So yeah, Whew, it's stuck again. I don't know what's going on with internet. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, Android is like a little slower than iOS, that's true. Uh, Performance-wise, iOS and iPads are much better than Android phones. If you, if you wanna have a feel of the apps, uh, like if you wanna just try one of those, you, I have installed on my devices for iPhone, iPad, and Android. If you wanna just try them out, you can, you can look at them. In Android, it's not terribly slow, but it's slow. It's not as good as iPhone, that's for sure. All right, any other questions? because we are not getting internet here. <laughs> Do anybody else has that a small 4G thing that, that can act as a Wi-Fi uh, wi router or something? Is there a plugin that uh, I'm not sure. Eclipse, like they, they develop, the Titanium Studio is, uh, it was, it, it's built upon Eclipse actually. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you can. Uh, you have SQLite database access, and then you can maintain offline database. Then you can build, actually, the sync functionality. Uh, whenever you, ha you get online, you can send data back and forth. So you can create, like, a Drupal view, or how would you, how would you, you create all your data that you want to send it on to the phone? Yeah, I don't think that's going to work for very large applications, but for small applications, that's OK, where, where the data structure is, like, really small. But with like big nodes and big user references, big node references, it's like building the whole Drupal inside your local local app. Do you know the limitations of the Drupal storage? Uh, I don't think like there are like any uh, vis visual limitations to me. It's, it's you, you can it's not like WebKit which gives you just five MB or so. It's 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 pretty large that you can go on. It's gonna work. We got a 3G here, I guess. What's its name? Choose the wireless drop down. And mine's not listed. <laughs> it's going to take a while. Which one is it? It's like iPhone? Or? No, it's not listed. Ah, Ross, iPhone, my week. Okay. Thank you. Still connecting. Any other questions so far? Yes. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I will. I will show you a couple of examples. Like uh, the, the basic idea is like uh, you use services to do everything in Drupal. Your services API, for example. I'm, I'm going to show a couple of. Uh, the calls that we can do using services 3.x. Uh, so the call thing is like right here. For example, I have my API endpoint at API. This is Drupal 7 and services 3.x. 
So for example, I, I, I want to fetch the photos from a view inside uh, uh, on, on, my, on my titanium uh, mobile app. Call to <laughs> All right, no problem. And views name of the view, and then go use the J, uh, REST API making view name dot JSON. So it, it tells me that I want result in JSON, and then I'm going to pass arguments like arg zero is I'm passing as one, uh, which is for user ID one, and then I'm passing it a limit, uh, and then offset value as well to which. So it it is going to return me uh, data of a view. Let me show you how it works in the browser, if my internet is working again. No, it's not. I guess you've been to many presentations where demos were screwed up by internet. <laughs> So, so yeah, so call like this will get you data from, uh, from, from a view. Similarly, you can do with user objects. You, you want user object, so you, you do API slash user one dot JSON. It will pull me data for my user one object. Uh, and then if you want to update a node similarly, all that, it's, it's just similar to REST API that you, you're going to make calls, XHR calls, uh, using your Titanium API to, to a Drupal-based system. You create nodes by uh, node and then send the title, body information. It just creates node and returns back a node ID and node data. What do you have to set up? You need titanium, you need the basic app setup, and then you just use the XHR. Uh, on the Drupal side. On the Drupal side, you need to install services API module, and uh, that's pretty much it that you just need a new services, a service. The, the, the link to module is project slash services. That's, that's what you need to install, that's it. It, it enables you to like, uh, your act as Drupal installation as a web service. Yes. Um, you have access to different APIs regarding on your membership. If you have like the community membership, you have access to the basic APIs. If you have the pro membership, you have access to the pro APIs. What happens if um, you change your membership? Will your old apps still work even though you don't have the pro membership anymore? Uh, according, I, I don't, I, I am not in a position to answer that question and that could be a little complex, but I, I don't think if you, if you are not signed to a contract, you can use that in your applications. That's, that makes sense actually. Because like if you if you if your contract is not valid, then you are definitely breaking the contract. But like you, it's it's not that expensive. You're, are you talking about titanium uh, mo plus modules? Yeah, accelerator plus modules. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You need to have like you need to have an active subscription to be uh, to be following those rules. Because I was wondering if I ever decide to get into really native so iPhone yeah, 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 programming, yeah. will I be still be able to use my old apps or will my old apps not work anymore if I ever cancel them. They will machine. work. You, you have the code and everything. It's not okay. a binary that you're getting. You're getting the code. So they will be working, but you are not, uh, you're not using that like, uh, legally. <laughs> That's the only thing. Okay. So you, don't buy, you can't buy the module I don't think. They, I'm, I'm not that familiar with it. You can, they, re, they change it every day. They are just uh, like in, in, in process of building their company as well as all these kind of enterprise. Yeah, it's, it's like whole the project is open source, only the TI plus modules that you talk about, like the BR barcode scanner and like uh, those credit card scanner modules, they, they sell those things. Okay, we have a working internet now. It's great. Excuse, excuse me? Yes. Um, did you compare um, Titanium to PhoneGap before choosing Titanium? Because it's uh, fully free, uh, PhoneGap, in comparison. Uh, yes, PhoneGap is uh, free, but it is a uh, WebKit based. Titanium is uh, is it's like it's like native. Uh, native is fast. Native is like uh, you are you use a native app, you use a web 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 browser. You know the difference. So native is definitely fast. You get uh, all the native APIs. It's faster loading time. It's faster using it, and uh, you get 
more done with it. Uh, like it, it, it gets you, uh, like it restricts you somewhere. The phone gap won't give you access to whole device, whole device uh, things. It, it, it gets you everywhere, whatever you like. Okay, let's try to prize me. I'm hoping it will work now. All right, here we go. So uh, this is like you logged into, uh, you're using your Drupal account, you have a view of all the new videos and all the popular videos. Uh, we also put a thing called like, it, when, whenever you reach the end, you pull up, you, you can load more videos. This is just a view from your Drupal website and uh, you're fetching a photo, the title, the time of the video and taxonomy terms related to it. Then you're gonna click on it, it will take you to the video detail page and uh, which is like a node.get call or using titanium and uh, it works both ways. So then it gives you like links to like more uh, like details of it and then the related videos and the v other videos in series section. So you can try playing this video or inside it. Hope internet supports this. And so, so this is like a multimedia, like a me using the media APIs, we are playing video, uh, using XHR API, we are uh, fetching stuff from Drupal website. All the data is on our Drupal site and you are just using it on a mobile app. Uh, that's, you have to have a Mac. This is uh, our iOS sim simulator, it's, it's Xcode. There's nothing layer. Any other questions? Internet is quite slow, guys. <laughs> uh, as far as I understand, the application logic, especially uh, the front-end part, is uh, JavaScript, as you said, right? Oh uh, yes. Can you see a little bit of that to see how it looks like and how you you program it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Just trying to. I don't know. Okay, here it played the video finally for us. So this is running on uh, Titanium, Titanium API and it's fetching video from CloudFront service uh, using Drupal and yeah. In this chapter, we're gonna talk about content types. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'll just like, I will answer your question in a minute. I'll just run a demo this first. So, so here we are actually do a lot of things, but whatever we can with Drupal. So I can search here. For example, I wanna search like if there is a video about Twitter on my Drupalize.me website. It's gonna make a call uh, to node search on my, uh, on my website and gonna fetch me all the videos and uh, you can view details and watch them. Then similarly the queue which I told you about, it's fetching a uh, view for my uh, using flags module. So if I created a queue using flags, it's fetching me that view here, I'm displaying data. And uh, the user information is again user information and uh, you can, under browse, mo browse section, we have list of taxonomies, the kind of videos that you're gonna have on, the, uh, on this app. So uh, then we are using uh, views to get into, uh, like when you click on it, it will fetch all the site building videos using views. Excuse me. So yeah, so this is like a kind of things that you can build and you're using media API to stream and to, uh, to play videos and stuff. I'm gonna show this Todd stuff, which is, like you, in this app we are, we are build, saving a lot of node content on the, on the web-based system. And it's, it's just doing a lot of stuff, complex stuff in the background. Um, any other questions in the meantime? I'm, I'm just trying to make it work. Uh, yes, you can. You can you can access everything that you like. In the meal camp, we had the ac ac uh, accessing address book option. You can select the contact from there. It gets you the information in the contact. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you. So for that, I will. Uh, 
I will tell you to go to, to download NBC uh, Universal app. It's, it's for iPads. And uh, they, they are doing very nice UI and uh, configuration things in there. It's like very complex app. That will give you like, uh, the things that you can actually build with it. So this is another thing that we built. Uh, this is uh, a Titanium-based, using Drupal as base system. You have classes. And then under classes, you can, this is a gym app. So gym has classes for each day. So it gives you a list of class, then you can select the students who are doing, uh, attending a class, and then you can save workouts for them on a Drupal-based system so that they can go back and see their workouts, their log workouts and stuff. Uh, then you're gonna select the workout for them. Let me actually rotate it to the left so that you can see the rest of the app. So I can see there is one workout for this class. This is another node that it just pulled from a Drupal site. And uh, I can see now the workout details. It's like type of workout description. These are all different uh, CCK things that we have. Then, then we can have like a start timer and like do like use the native functionality of, of, uh, of device as much as possible. So here I can like start timer and then record their, uh, their things on the go. So I can use these type touch functionality to save data or maybe if, I, if I'm more interested I can uh, add more details to it, and I can mark them rx And then when I press a sesh, uh, add session result, it's going to create a couple of nodes back on my uh, on my Drupal-based system and saving all the, all of them there. So, so yeah, and it, it just added and like if you if you want to see them those results, you can go to the leaderboard and you can view them uh, how what we just posted. You can see like under this class. The, this was the workout, and who, who did this workout, and what, what were their records, uh, you can view them. So all, everything is Drupal in here. There are a lot, a lot of node, node relationships, user relationships, all handled by Drupal. We are not doing it. We are just using views to expose all of our data for our app. So yeah. So about your question, like uh, where, how to write that kind of JavaScript, and so uh, I think I can show you some of it. For example, like if I want to add a like a uh, row and uh, like a table view row, I'm just defining the stuff like uh, avatar avatar. This is not a perfect example to show that. Let me get into UI underscore styles. Okay, so for example, like for the buttons, I have defined styles in JavaScript as like background image, a background selected image, height, width, color, uh, the font the ty title on the top and the font weight, what we want to be, and the font, maybe the font name in some cases. So uh, similarly, you can, you can define these, uh, like all the CSS properties work here almost, almost, almost all of them. And then there's like, you can do things like shadows and stuff. And uh, the, the amazing part is like, you can also do like very cool animation in, in the app screens. And so you, you can, they are all native in it and they're very fast. Any questions around it? Tell us a bit more about the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is something, uh, if, you, if you're more interested, you can read on my blog. I'm gonna blog more about it, but yeah. That is something like complex. So how user authentication works, it's similar to Drupal. Uh, but in, in mobile case, you need a, a session ID to authenticate back to the site. So first, what you do is like you, you make a se uh, system.connect request, which returns you back an anonymous session ID. Then you use that session ID to make a request for user.login service uh, using that session ID, and uh, you send username and password. It authenticates you, and it sends you the user object. Then when you see it's a fine user object, you, you verify roles and everything else, then you give them access on the app. So these are like three steps that you have to do. While creating account, it's the same. You do a system.connect, you get an, an, a session ID, then you make a uh, call for uh, user.add, uh, and you pass the email, the username, password, and other, other variables, and it sends you back a user ID, which it just created. All right. Uh, so uh, like bridging is like, it's just making an XHR call. I can show you the code. But I was just trying to show you like what, uh, what, how the endpoints work in Drupal services API. So for example, this is my uh, services in uh, Drupal 7 install. I have an API as my endpoint, and I'm making a call to mealcamp.photos.json. 
So it should actually get me back all the photos which user one has uploaded to be the limit of 15. But internet is not working. <laughs> okay, it should work. So it returned me the JSON uh, for that uh, for that request, and I'm gonna use this JSON to fill table on my uh, or maybe any other view on my on my app, and gonna display data over there. So here you can see it returned me all the node objects that I requested, field, meal, and and its URI in public direct, uh, files directory, title, and other content. So. Uh, this is a field view, I guess, yeah. I'm just calling for like title and a body and image part of it. I'm not sure yet, but yeah, it's almost this. But yeah, you, you, there, there's like a lot of information on services uh, module page. You can learn more about services there. Uh, there are a couple of tools listed which will help you uh, to, to, to make uh, like test requests to services API and like see what is coming back and how to send data in there. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you how the XHAR call works as this guy requested here. here. So, uh, for example, uh, for user get, we, we have like user dot get service. You you use a couple of variables like timestamp, nonce, uh, URL, then build out a hash out of it uh, uh, using a SHA two fifty six algorithm, and then use that hash to authenticate your uh, your app to to the service, and then Drupal get you access, and then you send the data here, XHR or send. Inside of this, you you send your JSON string, and uh, then you get the code, uh, then you get the re values back in onload function, which is, uh, yeah. So that's how it works. You would always use JSON, right? No, it's not, uh, not necessary. You can use... It's fine, but like, yeah, you, you, like, you, you would like to use JSON because it's very light. Yeah. It's, it's stripped down, very less data is flowing over the network, the best part is... And uh, you know the JSON, like uh, uh, Titanium supports JSON out of the box. They got like uh, these functions inbuilt, json.stringify, json.serialize, so, so you can use them out of the box inside the app. Yes? Is there plist support built in as well as for JSON? Uh, plist property list. I, I don't so know that. High performance binary. Plist support. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think I have seen this that in. Uh, you can write your own module if you like plist support, but why would you like to write a plist if if you support JSON? Like I always prefer JSON yes. over plist. Just because it's binary and it's quite light, and there is plist server for Drupal, which works quite well. Yeah, like it's like it's it's the same support for plist or uh, or JSON. It's it's supported both ways. I know <laughs> with services, yeah. But I don't think it it supports plist at the moment. Okay, thanks. If you got um, data on a Drupal site and you got an app where you go out to a client meeting and you can't get internet connection, and you've got some data on the application stored in a SQLite database, which has been copied from the Drupal site. Um, is there any tool that allows you to synchronize the data that's stored on your phone with the Drupal site so that when you go back into the office mm -hmm. and you've been putting information into an app, it just sends it straight to Drupal? Yeah, you can, you can write your own, uh, own caching layer for that. What you do, like you save everything inside a database, local database, SQLite, and then you uh, build a sync functionality. So whenever you get online, you can enable that sync thing. It will, it's same as you do in Evernote or a Wunderlist app, like you, you save all the data and then you sync it to your servers in the back end and everything gets to the, gets to the server. And when the sync is done, you can, uh, you can maybe delete that uh, local database or whatever you, you like to do with it. You can mark it like uh, sync. Is the module or any tools or any software already written to allow you to do that without having to write a synchronization uh, tool? Are you, uh, are you asking, is it supported out of the box? Well, is, it, is there anything available you know, that we can download so we don't have to write that? Uh, no, not at the moment. Uh, I have never written a caching layer for it. But there are, I know the Titanium people are working on a caching layer, uh, which is going to be supported very soon. So they are also working on like their in-app in caching. So you can cache stuff, and then you can sync back whenever the net, in network is online again. 
Cheers. Any other last minute questions? Um, just one thing is if someone, if ever, anyone wants to get started is to have a look at Kitchen Sink. Mm -hmm. Just, um, I, I don't know if you want to show people, but that's quite a good example for people who want to learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm going to give you uh, like a link to other references. So, so other resources like uh, there's a Kitchen Sink app, which is like really great. Uh, they have put a lot of UI examples as well as uh, uh, other kind of social sharing uh, examples in it. Uh, Accelerator maintains it, and uh, it's available on GitHub. It's open source. You can fork it down. Or if you have an Android phone, uh, you can actually download it from market. It's free, and uh, you can play it around with the, uh, with the devices. And then there is services API link over here. Then there's another good tool. It's called Test Flight App, uh, which enables you to uh, like upload your application for testing so that other people can install it on their phones. Uh, from their email or just brow browser. So you don't have to sync it back their cell phones using iTunes every time. And uh, there are more do documents available on Accelerator development site. And uh, you can also, there's a good library called Redux, which just uh, makes you write less code. You can use that too. Uh, and uh, yeah, send us reviews what you think. Uh, it's going to be, you can find session on the schedule page. You can click on the take the survey link and you can post survey results there. All right, I guess that's it. Thank you.